Guys, Bear Trap here with AZ Fly Shop. Uh, today we're going to be tying the Arizona X Caddis. This is a fly that we use on a lot of our small creeks and even some of our still water. Um, it doesn't use any hackle. It has a, a little bit of a tail. That's kind of what makes it different than a regular elk hair caddis. And it sits a little bit lower in the water, so it gets taken as an emerging insect most of the time, I think. So let's take a look at a completed one and then we'll get to tying. So we do a couple couple things different with this fly. I put a little CDC on as an, as an underwing. It gives it a little, little bit of movement and a little better flotation. Um, and like I said, we use, we use a, little, a little bit of uh, semi-seal as the tail. Um, that makes it a little bit different than the regular X caddis. uses Zelon. I just like semi-seal. And that's how we got the name Arizona X caddis. So let's jump right into tying this thing. So, for the hook on this one, I really like the Firehole 315 in size 18 to about 14. Um, I like these hooks. It's a, a clink hammer style hook, which means it rides a little bit lower in the water, and I think it represents an emerging insect a little bit better. And we're going to get our thread started here. And for thread on this one, we're using Uni 136 denier or 6 aught. Um, I'm using a light Cahill color on this just to kind of match the color of the fly. You can use whatever whatever color that that you like or whatever you know color matches the the color scheme that you're doing on on your X caddis. And then we're gonna tie in the tail. We're tying in the tail. Uh, for the tail, we're using Arizona Semi Seal, and I use it in a couple different colors. Today, I'm using in DW Brown. Uh, the reason I like the Arizona Semi Seal rather than the traditional Zelon uh, tail on this one is because it has a bunch of different colors in it. It's just uh, it, I think it looks a little more it looks a little more dynamic and realistic. Um, it gives it a, a nice little sparkle. And I like to take out a little pinch um, and tie it in about halfway down through the pinch so it splits it dead in half on the top of the shank right behind the eye of the hook. And fold it in half and then tie it back and tie it down the shank. And you're gonna tie it all the way down here, all the way down into the bend just so it rides real low in the water and then cut it real short. Just a little stubby tail. It looks like the shuck of an emerging insect. And then for the body, I really like this Trout Hunter dry fly dubbing in pale yellow. It It's really easy to dub on. It's kind of, it's got really good color to it. And it actually it floats pretty well too. It doesn't it doesn't soak water, and it soaks up floatant really well. So you're just going to take real small pieces. Just in like in most fly tying, less is more when it comes to dubbing. So you're going to take real 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 little little tiny pieces, and make a. So that it didn't show on the camera. Mm. make a you're going to take real real little pieces and make a real real thin dubbing loop or dubbing noodle sorry just enough to kind of cover that thread with a really thin noodle of dubbing and just wrap a, a nice Thin body, nice close touching wraps. I don't worry too much about a, a taper on these flies. Um, I don't think it matters all that much, but if you would like to, you absolutely can. And then I like to stop my body right in front of the hook point. Um, that way I, it gives me a little room to tie my underwing in and then eventually my overwing. 
and for my underwing using this Trout Hunter CDC dubbing in pale yellow. Matches the rest of the fly. This stuff, like I said earlier, it gives, it's gonna give this fly a, a little more flotation. Um, so it, it, the wing will ride, ride a little bit higher, stay on top of the water. You don't get it. It can be fished in a little bit rougher water or on a windy day on a lake. Um, this will help it. So help it stay on top. And you can, uh, you can hang little nymphs on, underneath of it. The CDC dubbing is absolutely awesome. So. We're gonna do the same thing with this as we did with the tail, tie it in about halfway. Take a little bit, tie it in, fold it back, and capture the rest of it, and then pick out the excess there. I like to take it and give it just a little bit of a haircut and try to get it about as even with the tail as I can. Try to make, I try to keep it from looking like a sharp edge, but uh, it's just an underwing. Then the next thing is tying in the actual deer hair wing. And, and for, for that, I like to use Comparadun hair. Uh, the reason I like to do, use Comparadun hair is because it's a very fine hair. Um, it's very straight. The tips are really fine. They have the, there's really nice black points on them. Um, but mostly it is, it is extremely easy to tie in and get to look good and that's why I use it. So when I go to, to grab a pinch of hair to tie in as a wing, I use about, about a quarter, about a quarter of a pencil. It's about that much give or take, depending on the size of the fly, but about that much hair right there. Okay, perfect. So we cut our, our little pinch of deer hair off and we're gonna put it in the stacker tips down. So always tips down. And then you're just gonna give it some taps. And that is going to line the tips of the deer hair so they're straight. And then turn Stack her sideways, carefully slide it out, and grab those tips so to keep them all nice and even. And then you can kind of switch hands and pick out some of those stragglers, but they're all nice and even. So now that you have them in your thread hand, your tying hand, you're gonna measure them out. So they're about even with the, the tail and those, that CDC underwing that we tied in earlier. And then you're gonna switch hands again and grab it with the other one. So, you wanna trim off this excess deer hair here. And what I like to do is lay my scissors against the eye of the hook, just using the hook eye as a guide and trim it off flush. And that way it looks cleaner at the end and everything's everything just looks better and then you're going to tie this deer hair in by taking one two loose wraps and then pulling straight down at a 90 degree angle and you'll see the the blunt ends of those that deer hair flare um making kind of like a little head and then you can wrap up and forward through that that flared blunt ends of that deer hair and then you can let go and you have a have a nice wing and then you push all this back, kind of push it back, exposing the eye of that hook, and you can whip finish it. Um, you can either whip finish right through the head, which is usually what I do, um, right through here. One, two, three. And then make sure you got it all, all even. Clip your thread, and there it is, an Arizona X caddis. All right, thank you guys for watching the video. Uh, this was the Arizona X caddis. We'll have a list of the, those materials that we used in the description below. Uh, leave a like, subscribe. Thanks for watching.